What's up Legacy Kids? We are so glad that you have joined us for our lesson today. Make sure if you haven't already to like and share this post so that all your friends can see what's happening here in Legacy Kids. Today is our second week in our series on Noah and it's going to be an awesome lesson. So get ready and let's jump right in. Good evening folks, Rusty Nimrod here with another breaking weather news bulletin. Listen, there's been continued reports about the possibility of rain coming soon. Now those reports didn't come from me, <laughs> not from old Rusty. They've been coming from Noah and his little ark. Folks, I can honestly tell you that Noah doesn't know what he's talking about. I <laughs> kill me. The truth is folks, there's no rain, no flood, not even a cutesy little cloud in the sky. <laughs> no, nothing but sun, sun, sun. As a matter of fact, not even a little hint of precipitation is on its way. So folks, I spent five years in college studying meteor... <clears throat> studying meteor... <clears throat> studying... <clears throat> studying the weather! And I learned how to read weather maps and weather radar and weather stuff. And so I know what I'm talking about. When Rusty knows the weather, <laughs> he knows the weather, all right? So you don't have to worry about some old guy in a boat showing up and making me look foolish on my weather forecast, okay? <sighs> Matter of fact, folks, I've heard that Noah is going to start his own little zoo over there in the ark. <laughs> and one of our very own film correspondents, Cindy Prescott, is there with one of those animals. Take it away, Cindy. Thank you, Rusty. I'm here with one of the animals that's about to board Noah's ark. And your name is? Um, I'm a lion. Leo the lion. A lion? Let me hear you roar. Roar! <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little hoarse. What? I mean, my voice is hoarse, I'm not, you know what I mean. Yeah, okay. What exactly are you doing here? Well, uh, my friend and I are here to get on this humongous ark so that we can be saved. All right, well viewers are dying to know. How did you hear about Noah's Ark? It must have been on our newscast, am I right? Well, I hate to bust your bubble, Cindy, but animals don't really watch the news. Or now that I think about it, we don't really talk that much either. But anyways, God told my friend and I that we should come get on this big ark so that we could be safe. See, he told us that he was going to flood the whole world and destroy it because of how wicked it got. He said if we came and got on this boat, we would be safe from the storm. Doesn't it bother you that there isn't even a cloud in the sky? Mm, nah, not really. You see, God told us he was going to do it. And if he said he's going to do it, then he's going to do it. I depend on God, not some weatherman guy. Animals all aboard. Oh, well, it looks like it's time for me to go, Cindy. You know, I don't want to miss that boat, so see you later. See you later, Leo. I'm not sure what he could be worried about. There's not even a cloud in the sky. It's not going to rain. Right, Rusty? That's exactly right, Cindy. You know, folks, there's no rain in the forecast. I mean, what part of no does Noah not understand. Boys and girls, I'm here to tell you that if you trust Rusty, then you have trusted the right guy. Well, that's all the time we have for your forecast. Until next time, this is Rusty Nimrod saying, keep your head in the clouds and the sun out of your eyes. Bye-bye, folks. <laughs> What's up, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Ah, oh, yeah, what's going on, everybody? It's me, 
VSKI to the double TLES, Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about being obedient. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Stick with God and you won't miss the boat. Some people, they think they don't have to obey God. They think they can live by their own set of rules. I'm my own boss. I don't have to listen to nobody. But that's not how God wants us to be. No way. He wants us to live by his plan for our lives. If we obey God and stick to him, we will never go wrong. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Stick with God and you won't miss the boat. And that is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby. Hey, peeps, what's up? What's up?
Hey guys, and welcome to another Bible story. We're continuing in Genesis chapter six and seven, talking about Noah and his family and the giant boat called an ark. Now, God had to destroy the earth and it saddened his heart because of all the sin that was on the planet. But before he did that, remember, he searched for a righteous man on the earth. That man was Noah. Now, Noah didn't know what was going on when God came to him. God said this, Noah, I have to destroy the earth and everything in it. I want you to build a giant boat, take your family along with two of every kind of animal on the earth and get onto the boat. When I send the flood to destroy the world, I will keep you and your family safe. Whoa, what in the world? I wonder what Noah was thinking. God, you're gonna send a flood to destroy the entire earth? And you want me, me to build a giant boat? It probably sounded crazy, but you know what? Noah obeyed. Him and his sons from that moment on began to chop down trees, hammer them together, and fill all the cracks in the boat. It took many, many years to get it finished, but eventually it was done. They had made this massive, giant boat ready to go for when the flood came. But how in the world were they gonna get all those animals on the boat? Noah was a little bit worried, but guess what? Noah didn't have to do anything. God spoke to the animals and two by two, they got onto the boat. Next, God spoke to Noah and said, Noah, get on the boat with your family. In a few days, I'm gonna send rain and it will last 40 days and 40 nights, the earth will flood and it will be destroyed. So Noah and his family obeyed again. They got onto the boat even though it hadn't rained at all. And soon, guess what happened? That's right, in a few days it began to rain. All the people must have thought that Noah and his family were crazy before the rain came. But when the rain did come, I'm sure they knew they should have listened to what Noah said. So the rain came, flooded the entire earth, and God kept his promise to keep Noah and his family safe. So today, in your lesson, you're gonna learn about obeying God and how it is always worth it to listen to what he says. Hey, peeps, what's up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, I don't remember eating bacon. Oh, hey boys and girls, how you doing? It's your old pal Boo Boo here to teach you today's power voice. You know, last week was my great aunt Reboida's birthday party. Well, this week it's my cousin Jerome's birthday party. And you would think he would have something nice and steady like, you know, a napping party or something. Or, you know, just kind of sit down quietly and read a book birthday party, but no. He wanted a jet ski birthday party. Have you seen a jet ski? It's like a motorcycle and a boat had a baby. You got two death traps put together and turn into a giant nightmare. Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, I'm feeling sick to my stomach. Uh, but I tell you what, you know what calms Boo Boo down? The power voice, okay? You guys wanna hear today's power voice? Why of course you do, why am I even asking? Okay, today's power voice says, and Noah obeyed all that God commanded him. Genesis 7, 5. What a spectacular power voice. That was fantastic. It made me feel a little bit better. You know what else would make me feel better? If the goyles, the goyles would stand up. Yeah, you heard me. I said goyles. You got stuff in your ears? Come on. Goyles, stand up and say the power voice with me, Boo Boo, on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. And Noah obeyed all that God commanded him. Genesis 7, 5. Good job, Goyles, good job. You impressed me a, li a, a little bit. Only a little bit, but you impressed me. Okay, everybody have a seat. Goyles, sit down, sit down. Now it's the boys' turn. Okay, come on, boys. Stand up, stand up, boys. 
Say the power verse with me. Boo boo on the count of three. All right, stand up real big and tall. Make sure your armpits are good. Oh, they're good. Okay, on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. And Noah obeyed all that God commanded him. Genesis 7, 5. That was almost too loud. It made my ears hurt. You, good job. You can sit down. Sit down. All right, boys and girls. Today's Bible verse is all about obedience doing what God tells you to do, no matter what. Even if it doesn't make sense, like build a boat and fill it full of animals. I mean, that sounds crazy cuckoo to me. But anyway, Noah did exactly what God told him to do and he was blessed. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Do what you're supposed to do and you'll be blessed. You don't want to miss the boat of God's blessings, even though they're just saying, miss the boat. That sounds kind of nice to me because boats make me sick. But anyway, I digress, okay? Now I need everybody's help. Everybody, everybody, stand up, stand up. Whoa, that's a bunch of you. That is a lot. Okay, that's kind of scary. Everybody stand up and say the power voice with me, boo-boo, on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. And Noah obeyed all that God commanded him. Genesis 7, 5. Good job, boys and girls. You can have a seat. Last week was a little bit better. Maybe you can do better next time. I mean, come on. Well, anywho, boys and girls, I'm still feeling sick. I'm gonna go lay down somewhere, someone that isn't moving, okay? But when you think about it, you know, the earth is rotating at thousands of miles per hour. We're hurtling through space at a thousand miles per hour. Everything's spinning and moving no matter where you're going. Oh dear. Oh, whoa, how that boined. Okay. I'm gonna go sit down somewhere and not think about anything. All right. Oh, bye-bye, boys and girls. Oh, I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. Hey, peeps. What's up? Today is our second lesson in our series on Noah called Don't Miss the Boat. How many of you would say that you are afraid of storms? I know that I can get scared sometimes. From the loud noises and the lightning and thunder and pouring rain, they can really scare me sometimes. Noah found himself preparing for a huge storm. You see, God had told him that he was going to flood the entire earth no part of it would be dry. No one would be able to walk on the ground because he was going to flood the earth. And he gave Noah some instructions to build an ark or a boat, a really big one, enough for his entire family and two of every animal. Now Noah was pretty worried because he didn't understand or know how to even build a boat, but he listened and obeyed. You see, Noah understood that even if everyone else in the world was wicked and not serving God, he was going to obey and follow his commands no matter what. And he had discovered something that when I obey, God will do these amazing things. And the things are true for you and me today. And that's what we're going to look at is what happens when we obey God. And our very first thing is when I obey God, I find safety. We all face storms. Now, I don't mean thunderstorms where it's raining and lightning, but I mean the storms of life. When everything that you thought was going right goes wrong. When someone you know may become sick or die. When your parents tell you that they're getting a divorce or maybe you feel lonely. Whatever the storm is, they can be tough and scary. What do you do when it storms? I remember when I was your age, I would run to my room and throw my comforter over my head because I felt safe there. I was comforted, kind of like what the blanket's called, a comforter. It brought me comfort in those times where I was scared. One of the things that I love that's God is, that God has called is our comforter. We can run to Him when life's craziness is happening. When everything we thought was going right goes wrong, we can run to Him for our comfort. And He surrounds us with His arms and gives us peace. He is our comfort. Now you might be saying, well, that's great. I find comfort, but I'm going to need more than just comfort for the storm that I'm going through. 
Well, the second thing is when I obey God, I experience miracles. When you face an impossible storm, God will help you. You remember Noah? God had just told him that he was very disappointed in the world because it was very wicked. But he had found Noah because he was serving him. He was doing what was right. And he told him, look Noah, I'm going to send a massive storm upon the world. And I need you to build an ark. And I need you to trust and obey my commands. And I will protect you. And Noah was worried because he didn't understand even how to build an ark. But he listened and obeyed anyways. And God helped him every step of the way to build an ark that was perfect to survive the storm. Not by his own doing, but with God's help. You see, when we're going through life's toughest moments, if we will just trust and obey God, He will take care of us. He is our comforter. And God only asks us to do what we can do, and that's obey and listen to His commands. And we have to trust that He will take care of the rest because He's our comforter, and He will give us the miracles that we need to survive life's toughest storms. I love in Matthew where it says that, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So when we obey God, He comforts us. When we obey God, we experience miracles. And our last thing is when I obey God, I will rise above the storms. No matter what you're going through in life, whatever it is that you're experiencing right now in this moment, whether it's you found out somebody is sick and you're worried, or your parents told you that they're going to be splitting up, or you're feeling lonely, Whatever it is, God is there to help you rise above. All He asks is that we obey His commands. And He will give us those three things. He will give us our, His comfort. He will comfort us in our times of worry and doubt and anxious thoughts. And He will provide miracles. The miracles that it takes to survive life's toughest storms that we can't do on our own. Noah couldn't build that ark on his own, but with God, He provided and we will rise above the storms. It may not feel like it right now. You may feel like it's unexplainable that you are never going to get over this, but with God, you will rise above the storm. No matter what's going on, you will rise above. Just like Noah, after the 40 days, his ark was still there, his family was still alive, all the animals were still well, because he obeyed God's commands. And if we obey God's commands, he will help us to rise above the storms. Maybe you're going through a tough time right now. You're experiencing a storm of life. Things are going bad. You're struggling with loneliness or depression. Someone you know may be sick or dying. Let's take a moment and pray right now that God would help us to survive life's storms. And when He gives us commands, I pray that you would follow them. Let's take some time right now and pray. God, I thank you for everyone who is watching today, and I pray that you would bless them in mighty ways. I pray that you would protect them through life's storms, and you would help them to conquer everything that you put in front of them. God, I pray that we would turn to you and obey your commands, and in those moments we would find your comfort, we would find your protection, and we would find your peace, Lord. I thank you, Lord, and I pray blessings over everyone today. It's in your name. Amen. Rewind!